Good afternoon everyone, it's David Schlothauer here with another detailed tropical weather outlook and discussion for Tuesday, July 23rd, 2024. So taking a look at the Atlantic-wide satellite imagery courtesy of tropicaltidbits.com at Dr. Levi Cowan. There's a link in the description below this video leading to that website. And we talked about yesterday how we do have a lot of Saharan dust coming off of Africa. There are signs now that is beginning to abate as we have another intense tropical wave coming off of Africa here in the next couple of days as this moves generally westward. And the environment is going to be changing here in the next week and a half or two as the pattern becomes more favorable and more conducive to tropical wave activity and some of these waves could develop into a tropical storm or a hurricane. But in the meantime right now we have a lot of shear moving across the Caribbean and the western Atlantic thanks to some upper level lows or tuts that we have going on and so therefore there's not a whole lot to talk about right now in the immediate term of the Atlantic as it remains very quiet. Now of course there is nothing that the National Hurricane Center is concerned about as far as tropical development goes. You can see it right here. No tropical cyclone activity is expected in the next seven days. So over the next week, we are looking at very quiet conditions in the deep tropics, in the Caribbean, in the Gulf of Mexico, and even across much of the Western Atlantic. But we all know it's going to be changing and we could see early symptoms of that by looking at the national hurricane center in the eastern pacific where they're keeping an eye on two areas to watch right now this little guy over here has a 30 percent chance of tropical development in the next seven days whereas this other area over here has a 20 percent chance of tropical development in the next seven days but it's coming and we can simply see evidence of that here on the climate prediction center global tropics hazard outlook this just got released today and this goes out for the next three weeks which is really really helpful so we can see this really far into the future even without looking at our global computer models, which I'll show you here in a little bit. But through the 6th of August, we have a low chance of tropical development here. That's a 20% area where it's red and white, red and white like a candy cane, right? Then we have a solid red area here over the Eastern Pacific. That's where there's a 40% chance of tropical development within this week to time frame. But look at what goes on in the Atlantic here. There is a low chance, not a high chance. It's not like we are going to see something develop. It's a low chance, but it's there over the Western main development region, over the Caribbean, over the Bahamas through the 6th of August. And there are evidence of that. Wait until I show you the European model here in just a second. And then look at what we have here through the 13th of August. So the 7th of August through the 13th, there is a low chance of tropical development here in the deep tropics of the Atlantic. So yes, it is seasons waking up and we're seeing evidence of that here soon while the eastern pacific looks to calm down a little bit more and keep in mind look at over here over africa above average rainfall will continue for the next three to even perhaps four weeks which is important to distinguish um, very active west african monsoon seasons versus lower ones and in this case we're going to have a very robust uh north or kind of central western eastern african monsoon season as it really kicks butt and i'm gonna tell you all as it's right and correct here on the youtube channel this is not fear mongering this is not no hype or gripe because a few of you i'm not gonna say who left some really rude comments in my last video yesterday saying oh this is gonna be a bust this is not gonna be a hyperactive season Please do not say that right now. This is climatology. I want to really, really, really make it clear in this video that we're dealing with climatology right now. We're not supposed to have a hyperactive July of tropical activity. It's not supposed to be that way. And boy, if it was, we would be in a whole different situation right now. Barrel is enough already. We had a Cat 5 barrel. We could use a break because we know what's coming. 
And we can see that here, looking at climatology right now, we're going to decrease in the frequency of tropical activity towards almost the very end of July and early August. But look at this. We really kind of go up a little stair step by early August. And then once we go into, say, August the 15th and beyond, it is game on. I really, really think, folks, and again, not trying to hype and gripe on this, I do still see a hyperactive period coming, especially late August into September. Some of you might disagree with me on that, and that is fine, but please do not make any hurtful, rude remarks on this video saying, oh, David is hype casting because he's predicting a hyperactive season. That is a understatement. Really, it is. When you look at uh, different agencies, they all agree that we're going to have a hyperactive season, and I'm no different with my prediction. I mean, look back at 2005 and 2020. We had, um, it wasn't super active in July. We had tropical storms, but you get the idea. It's going to get really busy here, and August is at transition time. Once we get into September, you all are probably going to be like, wow, David was actually correct on this season. Very busy. So now here's a look at the very latest European global computer model that forecasts the weather across the globe, right? Just like the GFS model, but only this is a bit more high resolution model. And we're looking at a three plot system. So we are looking at the low level up portion of the atmosphere. The atmosphere, we have layers, right? And these are thicknesses in the black line contours. The color shading is vorticity, how much spin there is in the atmosphere. And these wind barbs tell us the wind speed and direction at the same time. So we have winds going around like this, around this subtropical ridge over the central Atlantic. And this is going to be weakening as we go throughout the month of August, as it typically does, climatology speaking. So now, what you're about to see on the European model is a bit concerning, and you'll see why here in a split second. As we go into July 24th, nothing, right? We have a tropical wave. Now, this is a bit interesting here. We do get a little bit of a cyclone that does try to develop here on the European model. This is the 12Z run. We look at the previous run, so that is a bit interesting that the Euro is indicating a little bit of some vorticity spinning up along the coast of Texas. I don't think it's going to do much. Probably just some gusty winds and some rainfall, and that's about it. And then really what we're going to have to really look at is this tropical wave right down here in the central main development region. This is for July the 28th, the 29th of this year, and you can see where that ridge is. And then let's go forward. Look what happens. You can see a little bit of vorticity really spins up, and I'm actually going to get a little closer on this. So let's actually use this sector. We could actually see that spinning up. Guess what day this is? The 1st of August. What does this tell us? If we go back and look at our previous map, yep. There is climatology for you right when we ramp up the staircase up we go we see um, that tropical wave develop and that's what we're seeing here on the model so see I think we are just with pace of climatology and we'll see if we get above that by late August into September but look what we get out of this possibly a strong tropical storm on the European model by the 2nd of August. This is for Friday morning, but of course, this is really far out in time, so I don't want you all to look at this and be like, oh my gosh, Florida, Florida, no, 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 no tropical storm headed for Florida, please, not over the Bahamas, all right? There's very little chances that this is going to occur, but it makes perfect sense. Let's revisit the Climate Prediction Center with their tropical weather outlook here. Hmm, this rings a bell, doesn't it? Look at late July into the first week of August. Look at what they have highlighted here. Hmm, there is a low chance of tropical formation. So when we look at this, yeah, we can't ignore this. We just cannot. And I hate to say that. 
I know this is far out in time, 10 days out, and we all know how models can behave. They can change quickly and indefinitely. But I now see something that does pop up on the radar, and we will have to wait for future model runs to come out to see if that is actually going to verify once we get closer. If it does, it would simply be a strong tropical storm with winds 40 to 60 miles an hour, maybe 70 miles an hour. I don't see a hurricane just yet this far out in time, but you just don't know. This is the second day of August, keep in mind, and traditionally, the rapid ramp up in climatology is not usually until the last third of August. That's the 20th of August and beyond when we really see activity get going. So now, what does the GFS global computer model indicate here? Well, it is on a whole different page and does not agree at all with the European model. And we can see this here, of course. We look at the low levels of the atmosphere. There's your beast of a ridge, really strong. These thicknesses out here are very high, far above average. So we got a nice good Bermuda Azores high going on right here, getting the trade winds, blowing the Saharan dust off of Africa. And that is a stabilizer, a very stable pattern that we're in right now. As we go forward here, GFS does not indicate anything through what? The 1st of August. So one model uh, here, let's go back to the wide imagery here. So this was when the GFS indicates something. So roughly, this is August 1st. There is a euro indicating that tropical wave, maybe a tropical depression or storm. Look at the GFS model. Hmm, interesting. What about the Canadian model? Let's actually kind of dial that up here and look at the Canadian. Also, oh, let's go further out in time, nothing. But we do have a nice, good, broad tropical wave here moving across the Windward Islands. So there is something here that the models are trying to pick up on. Doesn't look to be significant. Only one out of three models indicate that this could become a tropical system. But it is worth noting that the Climate Prediction Center, the Tropical Hazardous Weather Outlook page, indicates that there is a low chance of development. So now, what about the ensemble forecast from the European model? This is the EPS, E, C, E, and S ensemble. So there's 51 members that run the ensemble forecast, including the control run. And what this is showing us as of the 12 Zulu initialization of the model indicates that, yep, there are more members in this model run that do indicate that there is some chances, probably about a 5 to 10% chance within the next 10 days that this area could see a tropical storm or a tropical depression. I'm not going with a hurricane yet because we have literally no models right now that indicate this to become a hurricane. But keep in mind, this is what barrel looked like before it really developed. And all of a sudden, all these global models latched on to that, oh, this actually exists. So let's now start putting more members on it. So that's my concern here is this could be one of those systems that kind of goes underneath the radar and we are not ready for it until it almost develops, right? If that makes sense. So that's what we are keeping an eye on here on the ensemble forecast that there is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13 members that are picking this up. 13 out of 51 members showing tropical development here in the southwestern Atlantic. And I got even more evidence to prove my thought on that. If we look at the European ensemble, probability of a tropical depression. Okay, that's winds greater than 25 knots. This is not probabilities of a tropical storm or hurricane by any means. Read it up here. Possible of tropical depression-like winds. And we can see here there is a narrow corridor really matches with what the Climate Prediction Center Tropical Hazards Weather Outlook shows. There is a 10 to 20% chance, and we even have more possible development out here right off the coast of Africa. We might have to keep an eye on that eventually. It is worth noting too, look at our area of interest over the western portion of the Gulf of Mexico. Hopefully that does not develop because we we cannot have any more name storms right now. Let's keep the reprieve. Let's kind of keep it quiet until climatology kicks in. But wow, um, there is a 50% chance in Southern Texas here 
to seeing a tropical depression-like wind field over that area with light to maybe even some heavier rainfall chances in that area too. So now that we talked about our global computer models on what the chances of a tropical depression or storm could be for the southwestern Atlantic for your locations in the Bahamas, the Caribbean, as well as say Cuba, the Dominican Republic, that sort of thing, and even Florida. These sea surface temperatures here, this is from the University of Miami and wow, wow, wow as it can go. Very warm sea surface temperatures off the coast of Florida here. Tampa Bay, some viewers reporting sea surface temperatures as warm as 90 degrees Fahrenheit. That is 10 degrees above what is needed to sustain a very strong hurricane, even an intense hurricane. And wow, we're just adding more octane juicy fuel to the fire here. And boy, if we get one of these waves that comes up the eastern portion of the Gulf or even straight over the middle of the Gulf or even down off towards the west, we could have big problems, serious problems over Texas, over Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, the Florida coast we just talked about. And yes, yeah, some of these uh, or some of these areas here, 32 Celsius, that is 88 to 90 degrees Fahrenheit of waters, the, the Bay of Youth, my goodness, very warm sea surface temperatures down there. And this is a really, this is a high definition map showing us how warm these waters are. And look at even over here, some uh, upwelling off the eastern portion of the coast there of Florida near say, uh, Tallah not Tallahassee, but Jacksonville, Florida there, seeing water temperatures of about 81, 82 degrees Fahrenheit, not as warm as over here, that really won't matter because boy, if we get a system that kind of curves like Ian did, it could end really bad very quickly. Things could escalate on a whole different level. Now, the Atlantic as a whole here, as far as your sea surface temperatures go, definitely warming things up. Water temperatures are more than feasible or suitable for intense hurricanes for this time of the year, especially if we get these tropical waves that come off of Africa, they move in this general area, or they move kind of up over here near, say, um, Bermuda or even up the eastern seaboard right along that Gulf Stream current. We could have some intense tropical storms or hurricanes moving up the eastern seaboard. Remember Isaias? Remember Sandy? We remember Henri as well. Remember Henri took a weird looking track and kind of went up like that. Actually went really close to Bermuda, uh, Bermuda and then it kind of went up like that and it kind of did something, you know, crazy tracks that these systems can do and that's why we're here talking about it. So yeah, water temperatures, very warm right now. And they are well above average. We talked about this in yesterday's video, water temperatures in the deep tropics and even in the subtropics, two, even three degrees Celsius above the long-term average. This is departure from normal, really warm uh, along the eastern portion of the Gulf off the uh, Florida coast, Tampa, Cape Coral as well, or. Yeah, Cape Coral and the Big Bend here, water temperatures about two Celsius above the long-term average. Wow, that is definitely toasty. Yeah, I mean, hot tub, bathtub, warm waters. Yeah, you can go swimming in the Gulf and not worry about getting hypothermia because your water temperatures are really warm for this time of the year. And some of you could leave comments in the section below and let me know how warm they are exactly. Some of you say, oh, well, maybe they're 91 degrees or maybe 89 degrees, right? So upper ocean heat content, really quickly, I wanted to show you all this too. Just very, very high upper ocean heat content. And again, this is a measure of how much heat is being stored below the surface, the skin of the ocean. So you can think of it like this. The higher these numbers are, the deeper the 80 degree isotherm gets. That's about 26 and a half degrees Celsius. And the deeper that gets, the higher the numbers are. And that's what we're seeing right now. So very, very deep, rich, warm water here in the Caribbean. And look at this loop current here in the central Gulf of Mexico. And we all remember what Laura did took full advantage, the track went up like this, and we all know what happened with Lara as it really intensified pretty quickly, took full advantage of that upper ocean heat content. Barrel did as well, less than a month ago. We actually, a month ago today, we weren't really talking about a barrel situation. 
Now we are because you can see how warm those upper ocean heat content values are. Now, before I do close out the video, folks, just to review with what we talked about right now for today's discussion, Saharan air finishing up in the eastern Atlantic off of Africa. So this is probably going to be the last big gulch of dust coming off of Africa. The Atlantic quiet now, but is expected to get active once we go into early August. And I want you all to please have full respect on my channel. I don't like saying that too many times in this video, but okay, I might be hyping things up, but it's to be deserved. A lot of the modeling, the agencies really pushing this season to the max because of how warm the oceanic temperatures are, asking for a very busy Atlantic hurricane season. If I can just stop saying hyperactive and just say very busy, I mean, that's not going to get the attention to you all because, you know, it's better to be prepared than to not be prepared, right? Uh, and in other words, don't be, uh, don't be scared, be prepared. All right, there's kind of a little nursery rhyme for you all, okay? And we have the data to our advantages. We're lucky to see this. We're able to see like four or five months ago that, oh, based on sea surface temperature setups past with past analogs, we can expect that, okay, the sea surface temperatures were this configuration with a La Nina, this is what gave this season a very busy season. And that was 2005, that's 2020. And here we are again, cold neutral in the Eastern Pacific, a very warm Atlantic. There is no reasoning to not say that this season is going to be asleep. We already saw a barrel and we all know how quick things can, things can change. All right, so I hope that clears up the confusion, the fear mongering. I'm not trying to do that, but sometimes it's needed in certain situations. And this is the season that it's really needed in. But anyways, if you did enjoy today's detailed tropical weather outlook and discussion for Tuesday, July 23rd, 2024, please consider subscribing if you haven't already. Hit the like button, share this video with your family and friends, leave an awesome comment, and also leave a um, uh, ring the bell notification icon on this video to let me know that you're already getting notified because again, once the season um, kicks up, it's going to be a long one ahead of us. And lastly, I want to uh, make a brief announcement that I am getting prepared myself on the YouTube channel once these systems make landfall within 18 hours, even maybe a day perhaps, our team of crew of people here at the David Schlotthauer channel will be providing 24-7 tropical or live tropical updates on a tropical storm or hurricane as it makes landfall somewhere along the United States coast and a live updates as it moves over the Caribbean since we don't have the resources just yet there for that. Maybe we'll do an overnight live stream, but you get the idea. We will be as detailed and we will have as much coverage as we can possible when these systems make landfall. But anyways, thank you for watching and I'll be back with you more tomorrow.